Hello and welcome back. So let's move into the second protocol that we're going to be learning that is a core part of the brain care program. Once we've helped the amygdala calm down and feel safe through the CPR for the amygdala protocol, we want to always be mindful to create new possibilities for the way we'd like to feel in a like moment, such as the one we just experienced that asked us to help Amy calm down, or the new pathways that we'd like to have more of in general in our life. This is called the Creating Possibilities Protocol, and it's an opportunity for building new neural pathways and supporting us in having the brain that we'd like to live in sustainably going forward. So the sense of self through which we'd like to navigate the world. Remember with CPR for the amygdala, we've calmed the system down and we've supported the amygdala in knowing actually we're fine and we're seeing you, Amy, and we're here to help you feel better. And so that feedback loop has been cut off and our working memory is now no longer being inundated with the fear feedback or the data from the amygdala. That empowers us to start utilizing neuroplasticity to build the new neural pathways that we'd like to have in any given moment. Going back to this idea of this thalamus, remember I mentioned that's a core part of neuroplasticity. So when something happens, what we want to do is support the thalamus and having a lot of actionable data to say, I'd rather feel this way in this moment, such as strong or confident, rather than fearful, anxious, or whatever story the amygdala might be telling us. How exciting is that? We can build in the felt states that we want more of. Ultimately, the goal being that even if a threat is assessed by the amygdala, our feedback loop for agency and resiliency and personal empowerment ultimately is strong enough that it can jump in and say, hey, Amy, actually, we're okay in this moment and do it organically. So we no longer have to lean into being intentionally healing our amygdala. Instead, our amygdala and our brain are in a healthy relationship with one another. And Amy is just able to do her job of making sure we're not walking off those cliffs that we talked about earlier. It's a great place to be when we're in that state of resiliency. So what we're looking at here is this idea of we can teach old dogs new tricks if we think about our brain as being that old dog. And we're helping this experience in our brain become the new way of being. We're building the wide open neural freeways that we want to have that feel spacious and expansive and give us the room to learn and grow through each moment rather than being mired in these old experiences of the past. So what does this protocol look like? As you might be noticing, a lot of these experiences are pretty simple because our amygdala is so primal. We're leaning into sensory experiences and simply making sure to give our working memory and our thinking and brain a new job while applying the self-havening touch. When we're looking at the Creating Possibilities protocol, the new job that we're giving our brain is one of being open and curious about a different state of being. So that state of being is defined by what emotion would you like to have more of in this given moment or in your day-to-day -day life? You might think about feelings of being more confident or strong or maybe even peaceful and calm and anywhere in between there. It's just whatever you'd like more of. And then once you've identified the feeling state you'd like more of in this moment, see if you can invite yourself to notice across the course of your life a time where you felt that way. If it's a new feeling state that you're starting to build, notice if there's a color or even a symbol that represents that feeling state. We can borrow feeling states from other people or other experiences. That's part of that mirror neuron experience that we talked about before. Once you've found that positive anchored state that represents the feeling state you want more of, we're simply going to ask a question, what if? So let's imagine that the feeling state you want more of right now is a feeling of being strong. And maybe you're not feeling very strong, but you can reflect on a time you've been at the gym and felt strong while you were working out. And much like working out, you're building a muscle through repetition, we're going to be building the brain muscle of this new neural pathway through repetition. And so we'll start with the question, what if I was, and repeat it five times while imagining that experience of being at the gym. What if I was strong? What if I was strong? What if I was strong? And so on and so forth while applying the self-havening touch. 
what we're doing is encouraging our brain to start think about the, start thinking about the possibility of being strong. Once we've repeated that statement five times and notice my what ifs are kind of big, what if, what would this be like? That's intentional. We really want to encourage the brain to think about this. Once we've repeated that five times, we can check in and say, hmm, can I be? Will I be? And if that feels like a possibility, then we can go, hmm, I can be strong. And then we can move to the ownership of I can be strong. And same thing, just like we're building that muscle, five times we're repeating it while applying the self-havening touch. I can be strong. I can be strong. I can be strong. Moving into deeper relationship with the experience. Once you've done the what ifs and the I can be's or I will be's, I mean, encourage you to check back in and ask yourself on a scale of zero to 100, where 100 is completely true. How true does this feeling state feel right now? If you're anywhere less than a 95, stay within the experiences of the what ifs and the I can be's or I will be's. We want to really honor that our brain might be saying, you know what, we're not quite there yet. We don't want to ever lie to our amygdala. She hates when we lie to her. Instead of we're saying, hey, okay, Amy, I see that you're still not feeling quite in ownership of this experience. And so it's as though you're imagining you're watering a little neural seed in your garden and you're, built, you're helping that garden or that seed bloom into a beautiful flower of strength in this case. So you just go, okay, what if? And then move into your day. No need to belabor the point. You're just taking ownership, planting the seed and watering it gently. If you notice that you're able to go, hmm, what if? that feels good, the possibilities there, I can be, yeah, I do feel like I can be, then you might move into I will be or I deserve to be. Or you might even, if you're at a 95 to 100% felt sense of truth around this feeling, stay go, I am, and really own it. Go, mm, I am, and take deep, deep, deep ownership of that experience. And then invite that feeling state to go with you into the rest of your day regardless of where you land in terms of this protocol. So you might stay on the what ifs with a certain feeling state for days, maybe even weeks as you're building and growing and developing that special bloom. That's okay. Just keep checking back on it throughout the course of your days and inviting that feeling state to be present. Every time we revisit the felt state that we want more of, we're strengthening the likelihood of it being present in our life, which means in the future, when a piece of data comes in that could have historically unsettled Amy, our real little friend, the thalamus, can go, wait a minute, I have an off-ramp for this. We are strong, and our brain will automatically go in that direction. So I look forward to being a part of your healing journey. We have a lot of different guided meditations on our YouTube channel, which is Dr. Kate Truitt. And feel free to check out those guided meditations. We made them for you so that you can start practicing these experiences and take them into your day-to-day -day life. The more you build your brain with intention, the better able you are to create the world that you want to live within. Happy healing.